Are the LAPD closer to solving the murders that have been occurring in the East Hollywood area around the LACC campus? We will meet the newly appointed president of Los Angeles City College, President Rene Martinez, on our Off the Red Line segment. Also, Emily Barrett digs deep for the world's very best artist on Found Underground. Fashion Week LA recently hit downtown Los Angeles. These stories and more, this edition of Los Angeles Community Connection, stay tuned. Welcome to Los Angeles Community Connection, I'm Courtney. And I'm Jade. A series of violent acts have been happening lately in the East Hollywood area. A series of local robberies around our very own campus and community have led to the homicide of a transgender woman. The woman, Anaya Nee Parker, a 47-year-old transgender woman, was shot and killed Thursday, October 2nd. The murder happened on the 600 block of Kenmore Ave in East Hollywood. According to police, the Los Angeles Community Coroner's records, local businesses have lent their security footage to the authorities. The footage suggests there are three Hispanic men are the source of the robberies and homicide. Suspects are still currently at large. The California general election on Tuesday, November 4th will decide if Republicans will continue to gain power. Republicans are seeking to turn the election. Omid Obama's unpopularity, criticism of his handling of the crisis over Ebola, ISIS and the sluggish economy recovery, they're except expected to fatten their majority in the House of Representatives. Republicans need a net gain of six seats to claim the Senate and polls consistently suggest momentum is moving in their favor. A GOP win would give the party full control of Congress for the first time since George W. Bush was in the White House. And coming up, Emily Barrett discovers and inspires the world with the artists that she dug up from Found Underground. Hi and welcome to Found Underground. I'm your host, Emily Bear, with a very special guest today, Via Dang. Ingvar Harwitz. Martin Zepeda. Hi. Thank you so much for coming. Thank you for having me. Emily. So tell us a little bit about yourself. Um, what, what is it that you do? Okay, I'm dancing I'm, and I'm choreographing and I'm teaching workshops all around the world. I'm a singer-songwriter and I moved from Israel to the City of Angels to pursue my dream and since then it's been crazy. I've been doing many gigs and played with a lot of people and um, been very inspired. Oh, I started when I was eight, so it's been like 25-30 years, you know, that I've been working on making clothes. I hit, I hit the ceiling in Europe, you know, or in Switzerland where I used to live. I was choreographing, I was dancing, I was teaching everywhere, but I, I always felt like there must be more. Originally I'm from Mexico and I came to Los Angeles just to go to fashion school and uh, I decided to stay here. I loved it so much. It's like the capital of fabrics and trains and beautiful people. So I write songs, I, I talk about my life and I try to keep it very raw and honest. Um, also, because where I come from, I have a lot, a lot of things to say, so I try to do it through my songs and through experiences I've had. Dancing was the only place in the world where I wasn't judged for who I was, but celebrated for who I was. Who do you want to inspire with your clothes? Who do you make clothes for? I want to inspire everyone, you know, and uh, I want to tell the world, you know, they can use colors, they can use anything they want. Uh, fashion is a statement and, uh, and they can do anything with that. I could never close my eyes and picture myself doing anything else. I don't know how to do anything else. I've been doing it since I'm, I'm a baby, since I'm a kid. I, I've been singing, I've been writing songs. I, I, I sang in English when I didn't know how to speak English and it was really funny. Like, you could, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Like, but I knew what I wanted to do from a very young age. World, if you had one moment to tell the world something. I think you just, you just be it, you know? Don't dream it, be it, you know? No matter where, no matter which level you are right now, you will get there if you are what you want to be, you know, what you dream. <laughs> Words of the wise, <laughs> tear, tear, tear. This is so fun right now. You just have to keep doing, you know, what you love. 
follow that instinct, you know, but if you're really a true artist and that's what you want to do, go ahead. I think, that I think music is really healing in that way. I could write something and take it out of me and just put it out to the world. And be free with it. Best case, I inspire someone. Worst case, I inspire no one, but I'm still happy. My major thing, you know, is to help all the women, you know, to uh, to feel beautiful. If one person will hear my song and will get, will feel better about themselves, I've done my job. LACC's new smoking rig. LACC's new smoking regulations not only cause big discussions on campus, but also affects LACC's neighbors. Is this a permanent solution? LACC smoking regulations, effective since June 16, 2014, completely ban smoking and vaping from campus. Designated smoking areas on campus are now left vacant, but the sidewalks around LACC are used instead, which might soon lead to com complaints from LACC's neighbors. If caught breaking the smoking regulations, one might fa face penalties like members of the public may lose their right to be on campus. Students will be subject to student disciplinary regulations and employees may be subject to action by the Board of Trustees. LACC has seen more construction and fences in the last few years than roads in the snow belt during the winter. The campus is constructing a new student service center which is scheduled to be completed by fall 2015. In the Holmes Hall, projected completion is expected by spring 2015. Clausen Hall will open in fall 2015 to house the music department in their brand new performance recording facilities. On LACC's Facebook, they apologize for the inconvenience. The construction activities create, create but they are expected, they are excited about the new projects that will enhance the learning experience at the LAC City College. When we return, we will hear about Susan Cook and her talk on campus about civil and religious rights. We'll be right back after a short break. Oops, yeah, sure. Let's go. Moms everywhere are finding ways to keep kids active and healthy. Works every time. Get ideas, get involved, get going at letsmove.gov. Hong Kong is in the midst of its longest series of political protests since the 1997 handover from British rule. Student activists say that they have paralyzed the city's financial district, which has brought great wealth to the region. Clashes between students and police have been heated over the past few weeks. Their goal is to pressure China into giving the former British colony the right to vote. Tang Chi Hua, the city's first chief executive after its 1997 transition, said on Friday that the protesters' demands were not realistic and that they should accept a longer timeline for electoral reforms. Liung Chen Ying, Hong Kong's current chief executive, has said that the protesters have no chance achieving their goal. Students, I hope you listen to what this old man is saying. The 77-year-old who left office in 2005 said in a news conference, it's time to go home. Susan Johnson Cook spoke to LAC students and community members on Monday, October 20th, about the continuing struggle for civil rights in America. Among her many accolades, Cook is civil rights activist. Cook stresses that America needs to deal with the new three R's, not reading, writing, and arithmetic, but race, respect for women, and religion. She uses her position as United States ambassador at large for religious freedom to help spread civil and religious rights all over the world. As the third ambassador at large for international religious freedom, a US diplomat, I had all 199 countries as a part of my portfolio, and my job was to promote human rights, civil rights, religious rights all over the world. As the primary event during Los Angeles Fashion Week, Style Fashion Week LA, which is now deemed the official LA Fashion Week by the city of Los Angeles. The event is the largest, most influential fashion event of the season. 
Style Fashion Week LA has become an international, internationally recognized and respected fashion event. The fashion scene in Los Angeles has been transformed by innovative shows and experiences major growth every season. Next year, Spring 2015, models, designers and media will be on the lookout for a fashion show to remember. Our veterans have given the ultimate sacrifice of service to their country by protecting us all. Our own James Martinez interviews Selma Bullock, who serves as a friendly guide to the veterans on campus at LACC. Hello, I'm James Inez, and I'd like to welcome you to the first season of Off the Red Line. We have a great show in store for you today. I will be interviewing the veteran coordinator here on Los Angeles City College, uh, Ms. Zelma May Bullock, who may or may not be related to Anna May Bullock. We will find out shortly. <laughs> Zelma? <laughs> Any relation? <laughs> Any relation? Um, not, I don't know. I don't know, and I like to leave it that way. Okay. <laughs> I like to have the mystery. Um, yeah, I'm pretty inspired by Tina Turner, but I don't, I don't know for sure. Okay, that's great. <laughs> we had to get that one out of the way. The people wanted to know. Okay, um, how did you get involved with, with the VA? Um, I started working with veterans um, maybe like two or three years ago. Um, I was working in housing in downtown LA. Uh, work with Volunteers of America and uh, specifically I was working with senior veterans and veteran families. Okay and is there a big problem with uh, veteran homelessness or? There's definitely a market uh, you know there's definitely a need there's a, a big homeless population in Los Angeles in general and some of them are veterans you know um, California is not as an easy place to to live as one might assume um, some veterans are displaced some veterans have um, family, you know, happenings that they can't recover from or, you know, people become homeless for a variety of reasons. And I mean, the great news is that there's a lot of, of help out there. There's a lot of organizations that really help vets that want to help vets. Yeah, yeah. Well, the VA plays a big role. You know, they offer um, different programs around education and health care. Um, on the campus here, we have, we're um, lined up with those education programs. So there's like uh, vocational rehabilitation, there's a post 9-11 GI Bill. And they both pay for education and like some of them pay for like, they give like a, st a monthly stipend and okay. pay for books and things like that. To kind of give them a little step ahead to, to find the job that yeah, they want to get them, into. Yeah, support them in stability. You know, if you come back and you want to go to school, then, you know, the VA is here to support that. Okay, yeah. and that is a, another issue that uh, uh, some veterans have is <coughs> the transition from being a, in the military to tra uh, transitioning into civilian life. Can you speak yeah. a little on that? Yeah, well, I'm definitely learning firsthand from the veterans and, and still learning a lot, but I do hear that it's a big transition. Um, there's a lot of, uh, there's pros and cons in both situations. You know, in the military, it was, uh, I hear there was a very um, straightforward. There's, you know, um, a lot of community there, you know, sense of brotherhood and companionship um, and purpose, you know, and so coming out uh, of that, um, it's a big transition and that you're not participating in that anymore and it was really important for a lot of folks um, and also like life you know as a civilian is, is in interacting with civilians is very different um, yes that's very, very different true. <laughs> very true yeah. um, now another major issue that's uh, been in the news a lot lately is the PTSD and uh, suicide prevention there I heard the rate is pretty high of, uh, of veteran suicides what what kind of, of programs are out there for, for veterans that may be, go, may be going through something PTSD or having thoughts of suicide? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, well, you know, in general, in the office here, again, um, we have a lot of programs to support mental health. Um, I think the first thing is, you know, changing the culture around um, receiving mental health, like counseling and things like that. Um, in the office and, and among us, the veterans in the office, we all try to really support, you know, the that the mission is to succeed in school and you want to succeed by any, you know, means necessary. So if you need to go to a counselor or a therapist and that's a part of, the, you know, the mission per se. Um, but yeah, we have um, uh, a representative that comes every Monday. Her name is Helen Yum and she works with uh, U.S. Vets, um, a program called Outside the Wire, I believe. And they um, offer private uh, independent um, counseling. And by independent, I mean independent of the VA. Um, counseling for veterans and we also have a collaboration with the Life Skills Center on campus. Okay. They, they teach like 
coping skills, um, organization, procrastination, things like that. <laughs> or what everyone not has issues with. Yeah, and these things are like really preventative because sometimes, you know, you know, people will have their goal and then they have like a breakdown and it gets difficult, you know, so. Can you give us uh, one example of a success story where, where uh, one of these programs helped a veteran to uh, whatever problem they had, helped them surpass that? Um, well, it's funny, we just had an a, a alumni come back and visit yesterday, his name is Jimmy Guevara, and he came back, uh, and he's a success in that he transferred to uh, CSU uh, Northridge, and uh, and also that he's still involved with the Veterans Center there, you know, he's still involved with community, he does tutoring and stuff up there, and, and he comes back, and so I think it's a success in that he's still reaching and building community, you know, and going after his dreams. Well, that's great. Once again, I'd like to thank you, Zelma, for um, visiting us here today on uh, Off the Red Line. Um, it was exciting to hear about all the uh, things happening for vets. Um, and thank you for tuning in to Off the Red Line. After the break, we will have more from news from Los Angeles Community Connection. Stay tuned. The average text takes your eyes off the road for nearly five seconds. A Mexican native who is a resident of Los Angeles and has been living in the country from a very young age was deported about three weeks ago. Dario Guerrero Menises was attending Harvard University when he, a 21-year-old took his dying mother to Mexico when she didn't respond to cancer treatments in the United States. With the help of Harvard and the U.S. consulate, the 21-year-old was allowed to return on Tuesday, October 21st. After weeks of being stuck in Mexico, Menises was granted a humanitarian parole and a visa. Menises came into the U.S. with his family illegally when he was two years old, but the president Obama's DREAM Act protected him from deportation. ICE officials say sh he should never have crossed the border. When Menises returned to Mexico, ICE officials said he basically deported himself without permission. Here at Los Angeles Community College, we have an associated student government that represents the student's voice. The, the ASG supports the clubs on campus, which are a big part of the involvement in campus life. David Martin brings us his insight on the clubs at LACC. This is Dave Martin reporting for Los Angeles Community Connection. Astronomy, ASG, Black Student Union, and the Site Club are just a few of the clubs represented here today at the Quad for Club Rush Day. Students from all over campus came to the Quad for Club Rush Day. Well, we do a lot of gallery shows, we're going to visit museums, we go to exhibitions. Um, we also, of course, do art. We're an art club and we just try to be ourselves, you know, without anybody telling us what to do. Even Covington came out from hibernation to see what was happening. We haven't had a site club at this school for about 10 years at least, so we're trying to figure it out and everything. Um, we are trying to be kind of the school's support club in psychology at least. You don't have to be a psych major in order to have fun in this club. As long as you're interested in how the mind works, you'll find a place here. Students could play chess and even look at the stars. I am the current vice president of the Anthropology Club and we're one of the most active clubs on campus and anthropology is the study of humanity, of humankind, everything that encompasses to be a human, our evolution, our many diverse cultures. As you can see, the clubs represented here today offer much to the students. Reporting for LA Community Connection, I'm Dave Martin. Los Angeles City College is one of the most pro progressive community colleges in the country. Colette Amin joins Off the Red Line for an exclusive interview with recently appointed LACC President Renee Martinez. Is Los Angeles City College moving forward? Welcome to Off the Red Line. This is Colette Amin. 
Here in studio today, we have President of Los Angeles City College, President Renee Martinez. Welcome, President Martinez, to LA Community Connection. Thank you so much for the invitation. I'm We're happy delighted. to be here. We're delighted to have you here. Uh, President Martinez, tell us a little about your experience and skills that prepared you for a position like this. Well, quite honestly, I've been, more than half of my life has been in education. 40 years of being a teacher, professor, working as a student activity advisor, a department chair, a dean, and then a vice president before I came here. Uh, you were vice president at East Los Angeles College, correct? Correct. Yes. Uh, president Martinez, uh, in your fall 2014 newsletter posted on our LACC website, I read that LACC held a, a, its first student success summit on August 27th. Uh, uh, um, president Martinez, you addressed the summit and spoke about student successes, improving student successes. Can you share your ideas or your plans? Well, success is number one part of our strategic plan for the college. It is also part of the strategies that we want to have with our achieving the dream goal. And so the focus is really in terms of getting students to complete, complete their courses to be persistent. If they complete their courses, they'll go on for a certificate, which is a skill set. Hopefully they'll go on for a degree if they realize they've been successful here. And if they take the appropriate general education, they could transfer. And uh, that's really important to have options. And my feeling is that success is based on students knowing what those options ha are and that they know that they can do it. Mm -hmm. uh, in that same newsletter, you also mentioned the completion of our kinesiology building. Um, the building's complete. Is it operating efficiently? It's, up, it's at the end of the closeout, what's called a closeout in construction, where we're still checking on things working properly, making sure that <clears throat> if they're not, that we use our insurance and our warranty. And so we're about ready for the closeout, yes. Okay. Now we have a new pool as well, right? Yes, we do. Um, there are classes being held? Yes. Swimming and it's, classes? It's exciting. to We have uh, swim skill classes, we have uh, lap classes, and we have classes uh, day in the evening and on the weekend. We also have classes for community services, which is a fee for service. And uh, if you come on a Saturday, you'll see this, the children taking classes, which is a wonderful experience, especially in our area where it's so condensed and we don't have that many pools that children can use. So it's very exciting for them. Right. So we're serving our community in yes, that. Yes, we way. are. Uh, President Martinez, one of the biggest concerns uh, I've heard here on campus is uh, the financial aid office, uh, the customer service experience at the financial aid office. What can we do to improve the customer service experience for our students? Well, LA City College, I don't know if people realize that 60% of our students are on financial aid. So we have a lot of students that we have to deal with. And yes, I agree that we've been uh, working on that challenge for the last two years. How do we make the lines shorter? How do we become more efficient? What kinds of things can we do online? How do we change the environment? This is something that I just spoke to the new vice president, Dr. Smith, who just started last week, that this is one of my goals. I'm also looking forward to the new student service building where they will be out of that village that uh, needs to be gone mm -hmm. and, and uh, have services that they don't have there. There are lots of room. There'll be uh, some types of monitors to let them know that they're in line. They don't have to stand in line. So we're looking forward to that new building, too. I think that will really help our students, and plus it'll be more professional looking. Yeah, so I agree. Um, President Martinez, there's a new Senate bill. It's very exciting. Uh, which was approved in our California legislator, legislative on uh, September 28th. Uh, can you tell us about this bill? It's, it's a bill about the baccalaureate degrees being offered at community colleges. Can you elaborate? Sure. Uh, this is a project that really community colleges have worked on for four years. And uh, initially, the focus was more on career technical programs. And now it's really open. Um, the impression, though, I think when I read articles, it, it makes it sound like every college can do a bachelor's degree, and it's every district. So the 
challenge and an opportunity that we have in LA Community Colleges that we have nine colleges. So we're gonna have to decide which focus we wanna go on and, uh, and are we gonna impact three colleges? Are we gonna impact all nine? So this is something that we're striving to work on as I speak. We are discussing that tomorrow, but we're looking forward to it. Yeah, so we will be in this pilot program offering we we hope we will, but okay. I don't know that yet because a decision hasn't been made. Okay, so my next question is digressing a little bit from uh, these serious questions. Uh, tell me, uh, what motivates President Renee Martinez to achieve her goals? Every day I think of the challenges and the opportunities. Uh, in my role as a vice president, I was given this firefighter hat. And I think that lots of times in my role as a president, I put out fires, but I don't want those fires to erupt again. I want them to have closure. So every day, I think it's an opportunity that I'm fortunate to have to, to say that we're offering skills to our students so that they go out and get a job that makes more than a living wage and that helps our community be successful and leads the way for their children in the future, their models, so. Mm -hmm. So, you know, like Mike, President Martinez, I wanna be like you. Oh my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, we'd like to thank President Martinez for taking the time out of her busy schedule to join us here at uh, Los Angeles Community Connection. Um, President Martinez, we could talk to you all day, so we hope you'll come back and visit us. And uh, I'd like to also thank our audience for sharing this um, very uh, unique and special moment with our president here. This is Colette Amin, and uh, we're off the red line. Islamic State, also known as ISIS, released a video on Monday, October 27th, featuring hostage John Cantley. It is the second video Cantley has been featured in. The video, posted online Monday, is the latest ISIS has released of Cantley, who's been held hostage for nearly two years. The British photojournalist, who also wrote several articles for major British newspapers, was kidnapped in November 2012, along with American journalist James Foley. In the first video of him released by the group last month, Cantley made clear that he was forced to share a message from ISIS. The video released Monday portrays Cantley as a reporter in the field claiming to battle for the Syrian border town Kobani is coming to an end. The bizarre five-minute video titled Inside Ain al-Isla shows the captive journalist walking amongst the ruins in a section of the Kurdish stronghold, saying that it will be soon under Islamic State control and criticizing Western media. This time, the propaganda takes a much different tone. Instead of criticizing bombing raids and U.S. President Barack Obama, Cantley criticizes the media's reporting of battles in the war-torn region. Los Angeles Community Connection strives to give a voice to our community. Roger Biggs Smith joins us to share his opinion on campus happenings. Theft on the campus is getting out of hand. People are stealing anything not nailed down and some stuff that is nailed down. Can you believe last Wednesday, October 22nd, someone stole a 75 pound industrial microwave from the vending machine area on campus? How did no one see this? A 75 pound microwave? Wouldn't people have noticed someone carrying that around? What did the thief use it for? As a lunchbox to take it to class with him? Did he have an apple in it to give to his teacher? All this theory does is deprive students of valuable resources. This wave of crime is creating a lack of trust amongst students, faculty, and administrators. People are scared. No one wants to lose their phone, computer, or anything else they own. I don't understand why people steal from others. I found a fashion bag on a train a couple years ago. A phone was going off in the bag, so I answered it and met the owner, Ira, a fashion student to return it to her. She was so grateful that we became friends. Now she sends me 30 cannolis every year. This is how it should be. Don't steal. If you find something that isn't yours, return it. You too may get 30 cannolis a year. 
You can follow us on Facebook at LACC TV. Also, see additional stories and information of our show on our website www.lacctv.com. I'm Courtney Loretano. And I'm Jade Reyes. Thank you for tuning in and for watching Los Angeles Community Connection. Mm -hmm.